Many of the people most vulnerable and least prepared to adapt to climate change live in places affected by conflict and fragility. This is not a geographic accident. People living in fragile and conflict-affected places have fewer resources and less government support to deal with shocks like a flood or drought, meaning that the impacts of climate hazards are more likely to become disasters. Yet, despite their vulnerability, they have access to far less climate finance than more stable countries. In fact, between 2014 and 2021, fragile countries received around 1% of the climate finance that flows to more stable areas. Addressing this conflict blind spot in climate finance is not only critical to build fragile countries' resilience, it is also a key part of the Paris Agreement, which commits signatories to support those most vulnerable to climate impacts. Unless we address this blind spot, we risk locking some of the world's most vulnerable people into a cycle of coping with crisis and undermining or even reversing the development gains of the last few decades. This challenge has been gaining attention in recent years. Most recently at COP28, more than 90 countries and 40 organizations signed the Climate Relief Recovery and Peace Declaration this declaration calls for an ambitious, immediate scale-up of enhanced support to fragile and conflict-affected areas. But what does this ambitious support mean in practice? First, we need to simplify how fragile countries access climate finance. Current climate funds modalities and processes can be lengthy and complex, with requirements that are often beyond the reach of governments of fragile and conflict-affected states. Work is underway to simplify these requirements and build a financial system which works for unstable and high-risk contexts. Second, we need to improve and streamline the ways this finance is absorbed and used, working with governments, communities and others to ensure finance reaches those who need it. Third, we need to address the root causes of fragile countries' vulnerability to climate shocks. That means tackling the poverty, instability and conflict which make it harder for people to respond to a flood or drought. Addressing these conditions will help people to have more resources, support and options to cope with hazards, building their resilience to future climate risks. Ultimately, Addressing the conflict blind spot in climate finance requires us to accept that many of the world's most climate vulnerable places are the most difficult but important to invest in.